What is this? Ugh. This is, oh my god, this is a perfect firestorm. <laughs> There's another thing that a bard can do. <laughs> I will move here and attack the mean man known as the gas man. I assume you're immune to poison? I'm actually not. Let's find out if uh, it makes me sad. Well, it makes me sad. Take that damage and like it. The nice thing about throwing a uh, faceless CGI army at you is don't really care if they die. Yam, yeah, you're up. Hey. Right. Well. Guess I'll cast Firestorm down there. <laughs> That's a lot of them in the somewhere around the corner, I think, too. Um. Or actually, hang on. Oh, yeah, you have super awesome low light vision, don't you? I have, um, a sunroad. Yeah, but in addition to that, you also have doubled, uh, low light vision. Uh, yeah, I think so. Two ten foot just... cubes per level. <laughs> oh, it's per level, right? Yep, I didn't read that. Okay, yep. Um, I'll do whoosh one here, one here, one here, one here, then one here. I don't think you can put one around the corner. Oh, I can see this guy, so if I like sent start it here, yeah, okay, that'd be the center. Yeah, can I stack these then? Uh, you can, but it doesn't do anything, doesn't do any extra damage. Okay, um, this will be so. Oh, that's perfect. For simplicity, I'm just going to roll 1d20 for all of them and just apply their modifier. Yep. Um, is it my... No. Nope. It is half your level, uh, so 14 plus your charisma modifier is the DC. I think that will probably be high enough that an 11 won't do anything. Uh, it should be 23 save. Yeah, I don't think anyone in here has a plus 12 reflex bonus uh the white is seven mummy is two ghast is five and the zombies and skeletons don't have it yeah so everyone in here takes full damage and the mummy technically takes double damage all right pinata just went off Um, the mummy's the one at the back, right? Yeah, the last one in your line of sight. I suppose if there was, like, uh, I guess this will be the square that I targeted. So if there's, like, some here that I can't see, they would get hit, right? Like, in these yeah, three spots. The there would also take damage. Um, you'll have to do that because I can't, I can't okay. see him. 
Okay. Um, that is everybody. It. Half of that uh, last square was actually rock. Okay, then we're on to Corey. That um, saved us so much time. <laughs> yeah, close quarters with uh, area effects like that are awesome. Especially when it's shapeable like that. You can just send a line right down the hall. Like a fireball would have only gotten eight of them. Whereas that, you can just keep stacking them. You said that the DC was uh, 18, right? For what? The, the big scary mummy? Oh, the scary mummy? Yes. Everyone can make their despair check. Is this Will? Yeah. Uh, is this a, a fear effect? Yep. Oh, it's like impossible to fail this. I give plus uh, seven. Actually, no, it's not. Seven. But everyone gets plus seven. DC is uh, 16, though. Okay, you doing anything else, Corey? No, I don't think so. I think if I run in there, I'll get murdered. Okay. Then it is the gas turn, so he will move up. And he will attack Barda. Oh my god! Doesn't confirm with the crit, uh, but that does max damage. So you can roll your paralyzed save, and then you take seven points plus d6 cold. I'll lock that fort save up to 16. Uh, you get plus two on that. Oh, me. okay, I don't need to use it. So you take seven points of claw damage and six points of cold from that first attack. And then the uh, the other ones do normal damage. So 11 points, three of which is cold damage. Followed by another 11 points, six of which is cold damage. And then it's Yogi's go. Right, is Sagan gonna move up? Oh yeah, he'll move up too. So you can roll another save, Barda. Um, did you roll your two saves there, uh, Kronos? I'll do it on my turn when I go. No, you do it when he goes, because he's bringing the stench to you. Why is he stinky? Because that's his uh, special ability. He's stinky. Uh -oh, he has the stinky. same special ability you have. Don't blame him. He's French. Who's French? The gas. How do you know he's French? He's stinky. I'm not following. Oh, Kronos. That's unfortunate for you. He's smelly. Uh, you are... Oh, it's only sickened. What's the DC again? DC is 16. Oh, I guess plus two. Do you have two luck? Nope. Yep. So, uh, you are sickened for D6 plus four uh, minutes. Can I give him my luck bonus? Uh, you can if you want. It uses your luck I'll, bonus. I'll give him. I'll give him my luck bonus. Okay. So he'll make that sixteen, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, that should do it. Three plus three. The bard is ultimate support. 
Did you make your second save, Barda? Yep. Uh, 17. Was the first save a 14? Oh, yeah, you got a bonus on that. Yep. Okay, uh, then that is it for this, uh, the gas, so it's Yogi's go. Do they take fire damage? Did they? Yes. You're just hitting them with raw fire damage? No, I, I did my attack right before Barda's save. Oh, okay. Then you then you jumped in. Oh yeah, this other gas. Totally fair. Fire damage is only three d six. We're only doing three d six. Yeah, the you get... bard is just switching it out for you to fuck up your macros. You get plus two to hit and plus two damage. So keep that in mind. He can give up some of his bonus to uh, inspiration to turn it into a d6. He just only converted three of them this time. All right, they're both dead. Okay, are you done? I'm done. Yogi, or sorry, Barda, you're up. I didn't, I didn't want to have to be the first one to run up to the right. You don't have to be, you can just delay. You can just wait for someone who's braver than you. Can always wait for the hit point sponge to go around the corner. I do have almost double my normal hit points. I could also just throw a fireball at him. That would do it too. I haven't casted a fireball yet. I think that might be what I do. I want to cast a you cast a fireball on fireball. two things. One of them's a mummy and takes total damage. Questions you make people make people feel stupid. I feel like that's. I just rude. seems like a waste of a fireball. Like using the firestorm when there were twenty things in the hallway made a lot of sense, but it's only two monsters left. Are, are rights incorporeal? Nope, nothing in here is incorporeal. That's actually one of the features of this dungeon. I really wanted to put in some wraiths and some shadows, but it didn't go with the uh, story idea. Oh, only one of those attack. The first attack. I forgot that I don't have um double attack there or full round attack there. Okay. It's three three d six. Oh, three d six. All right. And you get plus two damage and plus two to hit. Three D six plus two. Are you done, Barda? Yep. Can roll your fortitude save. Ouch, and then get raked again. Not confirmed, but max damage, so seven points plus two points of cold. And the mummy can't do anything, so the white will attack Barda. In the most feeble style. And we are back to initiative. So within 30, it's initiative? 
Um, 11. No, uh, yeah, 11, and then within Kronos, you're up. Um. I will, uh. I guess I should just kill the ghast, whatever. Fuck it. We attack the ghast. I love that you used your crit to save. Eh, we don't do crit damage here. Why don't you do crit damage? Because we have a weapon that doesn't doesn't like crit damage. Wow. 39. Unfortunate. One hit point. Oh yeah, it's already in. You have the plus two damage. E no, nope. The plus two is not in there. I should put that in that macro. Actually, put it in there now. And actually, no, I won't. I'll forget to take it out. So it's dead. Good put. Fair enough. Bard kills another ghast. It's true. Then we're on to Yam. Hey. Don't forget will... Violet. <laughs> She's just been hanging out the back. We'll shoot this mummy twice. Still think the skeletons are more efficient. Uh, the skeletons are awful. They have DR5. Yeah, but he does fire damage, so he just I delivers the true. fire damage. I kill the mummy! Oh, that's my turn. Good job. Uh, unless you have an extra plus two, I don't think you kill the mummy. I already added that in. I roll so low. Ah. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's what I was saying. Is twenty isn't a hit, so. Yeah, no, I don't kill him. Okay. Uh, then it's the gas turn, but the gas is dead, so we're on to Corey. Possible critical. It is a miss. I think it's still dead. Yeah, 3d6 plus 2 will probably kill it. Are you done? Yep. Well, I'll move Violet up. up. Yogi? I'm going. All right, I'm done. 46, um, DC 24 for Barda and Corey. Mm -hmm. DC 26? 24. It's 20 plus uh, half the hit dice. And it's, what kind of save is it? It is a will save. I don't think I'm going to hit that DC even if I try to yeah. use luck. Yeah, there's no way. 
Okay, you guys each take uh, 16 points from the white, and then I'll roll 3d6 for the ghast. So you can roll your saves on that. Is that including six, the minus 10? Or? No, they, they would take 6 points from the first one, and they'll take 1 from this one if they fail the save. Yeah. Oh, I don't think... Yeah, Corey wasn't there for the gas, so he wouldn't take that damage. It's just Barda. Nice. Oh, so I, I don't get anything. Okay. Yeah, you don't take anything. You make both saves? Oh, no, you failed the first save. Yeah, but I wasn't there for it, right? The first save was the 46, the thing you just killed. Oh, okay. Oh, you get plus two to that if that matters. That no, would put it really close, but not quite. So you both take six points from the first one, and uh, Barty, did you roll your second save? Not yet. And nothing from the second Oh, sorry, yeah, you thought, I think you said it was Will. Was it? It's Will, yeah. Was it Will? It is Will. Oh, yeah, so 17. Or I can use this. Uh, I'll just go with that second roll. 17. That's fine. So you take one point from uh, the negative energy damage. Okay, then uh, we're on to Barda. And then I'll five foot here. You can't five foot through there, but uh, you can move through there. If oh, you yeah. Know. Right. I can't. You'll only provoke the skeleton. Right, yeah, five foot. You can go through yeah, there. You just provoke. Here. Yeah, I'll move here. I'll, and I'll, I'll provoke. He doesn't hit you. Yeah, the only penalty of going through the diagonal is that Yogi Square is technically threatened. So that's the square you're crossing. Uh, my attack doesn't seem to have shown up. You might need to reload. We've been playing for a long time. Popped up. Roll 20 doesn't like it when you play D&D &D for more than four hours. You attacked a skeleton? Yeah, you can well, um, skeleton no, and cleave to mummy. Cleaves for chumps. We don't use cleave here. No, you just use your one attack to attack the skeleton. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. It's a one dead mummy right there. Yeah, 11 points of fire damage. That'll do it. Uh, not He's immune to damage, fire damage, isn't he? No, he's no. vulnerable to fire damage. Oh, right. He so he, And he's not the one that has the... I, I, right, but you had the one that was immune below 20, so I, I, was, I kept thinking about that. So yeah, he would take... Yeah, if you mouse over it, it'll tell you what its uh, special abilities are. In this case, he's only got plus 4 turn resistance. If you mouse over it and it says uh, FR 20, that means that he's got fire resistance. Generally, the, it's only the mummies that are in the same encounter with the uh, mummy lord that are going to have fire resistance. The other ones aren't, aren't close enough to get it. Okay, um, then it's the skeletons go, but they're all done, as are everyone else that's in the room. So we're done. What are you guys doing? Uh, heal up and move on. Get some healing butter. I'm just going to run and grab a drink while you do that. I'll do a... I can cure myself with a faith healing three, and it should bring me back up to max. Does it cost you a bunch of zero level spells I'm not going to use, so I could just burn through them and you could save it for something else? I'm uh, I might as well use mine. It cost me some third level spells. Yeah, I'll use mine, yeah. just because I'm not going to use mine in combat. 
Okay. I'll recast Hide from Undead again. Dipikai, yay! So you get 14, 20, 25, 31 should be enough. Yeah, that's, that's good. I just take a drink quickly, I'll be right back. Okay, what are you guys doing? I recasted the hide from undead. I'm going to walk into this room. It appears to be empty. I am going to roll a quick perception check to see if there's like uh, something on the ground that's easy to miss or something. Then move on. Okay, you notice a weird um, kind of crumpling on the ground. Like there's a lot of dust and dirt in here, but uh, there's a, one area where it looks like there's something under the dust. Uh, I will like poke it with my foot. <laughs> okay, uh, as you poke it, the dust kind of shifts around. It looks like it's cloth. Uh, can someone look at the cloth on the ground? That seems weird. I don't know. I'm not sure why there's cloth I, on the ground. I don't look at cloth on the ground. It's against my religion. Someone casts like, magic on the cloth, in case it's a magic cloth. Okay, I will pick up the cloth. Wait, sorry, yeah, I can. Is it a magic loincloth? It is not a uh, magic loincloth. It is a, a magical cloak. Ooh. Is anyone able to identify this? <laughs> uh, Just put it on. It'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. It well. is a beautiful cloak. Um, obviously, the fact that it's magical is what's kept it from decaying in here but it has a uh, really nice um silver uh like tassel connector thingies and uh really nice embroidery down the edges um on the back of it um it has a large um kind of like a dull golden color embroidery um and it's kind of like a, a shield shape Hmm. You able to identify it, Yam? I think with Spellcraft might do it. Oh, could I do the Spellcraft? Do I need the spell? Um, unless you have a special ability that allows you to identify a magic item with the Spellcraft? No. Um, nope. And unless you well, have a premise of what you're trying to figure out, I'm going to say there's nothing that I will tell you up front about it. Stuff, magic cloak, uh, and the magic cloak area section is that what you're doing i'm not gonna wear it <laughs> no i'm fucking... asking if that's what the party is doing are we moving on or are we continuing to study the cloak oh nobody can identify it yeah okay so you guys are just gonna stick it away yeah find out later uh there's monsters here yep there's monsters everywhere 
Um, Bardek, when you write down the cloak, can you put down that it's a cloak of uh, minor displacement? Cool. Oh my god, Pat. Did you send me the other stuff already? I don't know if Yogi's finished it yet. I'm still working. Give me a minute. Yeah, no problem. That was just one of the items that you have to roll a perception check at the end to find. But Kronos found it right now because he happened to be looking for it. Pretty good item. Oh yeah, it's fucking awesome. If you remember to roll your displacement check, that's amazing. If you put it in like your uh, initiative macro or your attack macro so you remember that you're wearing it. Are these intelligent uh, monsters here, Corey, or do they just not know you're here? There is a mummy there. Yeah, the mummy will get a save as soon as I find my mummy sheet. The mummy is plus eight. Nope. Uh, I don't think that's high enough, though. Well, Corey, I'll let you take the lead. Okay, when you get there, the second mummy can uh, roll on you. He also fails the save. Let me know if you want anyone else in that room, and I will come join you. Otherwise, I'll stay out here. Well, I think I need to roll, uh, what's it called, don't I? What's a what's it called? Uh, fear save? Oh, yeah, you got to roll your fear save, your despair save. Or plus two to that, right? Um, plus seven. Well, actually, um, how long has it been since the combat ended? Um, well, Kronos is going to check out that room, so I'd probably say several rounds. I mean, it lasts eight rounds, so you, you probably have it. Let's just say it's got two rounds left or something. Well, I think I made the save. He doesn't need it anyway. He blew past the save. I think I made the save for the mummies. You make the first one, then you can make the second and the third. Can I? Am I in range of the the Lord? Well, can you see the Lord? Yep. Then you're in range of him. Seeing him is what triggers the ability. Um, what is the, the what's is eighteen? Okay, so I make all of them. Okay. Uh, I... Well, the mummy lord uh, immediately turns uh, on you. And he casts a spell on the mummy in front of him. Okay, well, I yell that they've seen me, and there's a bunch of mummy lords. And there's a uh... bunch of mummies. Get your AoE spells. Run it in, uh, unless that's initiative. It is initiative. What do we get to initiative? Anything? Plus 11. I can't remember those fucking decimal points. You can also put it in the macro. I guess I could do that, couldn't I? You can put like D20 plus... Point zero something so that it's already in there. Then it'll add your mod to the good D20 and your uh, final total. Let's see if this macro still works or if I broke it. Still works. Good. I'll change my initiative back to what it was. Is there some reason you're putting point 0.1? Isn't your initiative way more than that? It is, but it's variable based on yam, so I'm just not going to put a fixed number in there. Oh, okay. I just put my dexterity in. That's a good point. I'll do that. That was what we always used to use as a tiebreaker. Yeah, the actual number the game uses is your initiative modifier. Obviously, if your initiative varies, that's less significant. In this case, because I don't do it, you're either above or below, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, the point—the points to beat you. 
<laughs> the point is to beat you on ties, not beat them. Yeah, if you roll a 27.1 and I roll a 27, it's the same. And if you roll a 27.9 and I roll a 28, you still lose. Right. Okay. Uh... Kronos, you're up first. Um... Yeah, are you going to... Actually, it doesn't matter if you're going to sing. Actually, it doesn't matter if you're going to sing. Yeah, are you going to sing? Uh, Yes, but it's already in effect. For two rounds. Copy, so one. copy, it's in effect. Moving forward. Five, ten. Okay. Fireball would be nice in here. Damn. Oop. No. Damn. Yeah, I'll just move there anyway. Um. You. Fuck it, I guess I'm gonna. Do you suffer the fear issue? Nope. You're immune to fear. Yep. I'm gonna ready attack on mummies that come within ten foot reach of me. Ready and attack um, on a mummy that comes within 10 feet of me. Yeah. I don't care about anyone else, just mummy. Correct. Because I have counter reflexes and they're all going to die anyway. So, uh, yeah. I am going to declare now. Oh, wait. I guess. So, six with seconds, AOOs. Man, six seconds. With, AO, with six AOOs, seconds. you have to attack. How does power attack work on AOOs? It does not. Even if you use power attack in your in your previous thing, like you just yeah, don't get whatever it. you put your power attack to when you make your attack, that's what it is from that point forward. At this point, you don't have a power attack set, so if you provoke at this point, uh, it'll be your base attack. Then I'll just attack the skeleton. Okay. Yeah, the skeleton is going to be the first thing that moves up. Yeah, but I want my power attack bonus. Yep. So, thing's dead. Okay, Corey, you're up. If you're feeling ballsy, I flank it. <laughs> Actually, no, I don't. I, I'm sad. Oh, I could have swift... Ah, I see. I see. I could have swift action, five foot stepped up. I see, I see, I see. Okay, okay. I'm definitely not pigeonholing myself in that room by myself, so uh, I'm going to hold until mummies get closer, I guess, until the mummy steps up okay. within five foot, five feet of me or something. What's Violet Ten doing? Um, cowering in a corner being within range to heal me if I need it this is the other reason why Corey never gets to flank he's a coward I just she's pretty squishy she needs more magic items before she can do anything no, I meant you. You could have just moved up to a point where you could start flanking. That is true. I have been caught out in the middle of nowhere a couple of times because I go in there expecting somebody to flank with me and uh, everybody you need stands to get back. Nice, like, you need to get nice moving in your spell ring. That would true. be fucking awesome. Do you, do you know how many times I've been like, ha I'm going to run forward. And then for whatever reason, the party's like, you know, it's perfect timing just to start shooting arrows from the rear. Yeah, no, I totally get it. But you're currently have a flanking buddy. If you just went to that other side, you would be in a flank position. Move up, attack the mummy, and then maneuver yourself around to the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just sound know. too convinced. <laughs> yeah, well, that was my point, is when you're playing a rogue, you have to be bold if you want to sneak you, in. You may be able to trick Bart into reconsidering his options. <laughs> All right, Yogi. It's your turn. I'm not as dumb as Barda. 
I think the term you're looking for is not dumb, but naive. I'm not as naive as Barda. Or you could wait for Yogi to move up and cock block you. It's, it's Barda who does the cock blocking almost every time. All right, I'll take out the skeleton first. Hey, if I'm not getting any, none of you are. Or you can just let Yogi kill all the monsters while you stand back. Is it almost my turn? Because I'm going to go let the dog out after my turn. Uh, no, it is not your turn. You, you got Yam, and then uh, your turn after Yogi. Got it. Well, we'll have the answer to that's plagued us since the 90s. It's Barda. Barda let the dogs out. <laughs> that was weak. Look at that, Yogi managed to do. Oh, wow, that's a lot of damage. I was going to make fun of him for doing one point of damage. No. More my shtick. I'm done. Okay, uh, then it's Yam's go. Yam a dam a ding dong. Hey. I will I'll shoot the skeleton. Do you have a magic bow? Uh no. Well you don't have any trouble hitting it, but I have a feeling you're gonna do any five DR it. Is it just five? And I guess it's just against your physical damage. You get the 3d6 on top of that. Oh, wow. You actually do Holy decent shit. damage. Killed it. <laughs> yeah, I think he, he got it. No, he didn't. He has to take five off nope. from that. That's a good choice. Dude, that 3d6 was poop. Wow. I was one damage away from killing it. Um, Unfortunate. Fuck it. As a swift, I'll use my... Uh... Another zero level spell for the rock rockfall thing. Can you reach him? I should be able to. Twenty five feet plus five feet plus per five. Is only forty five feet. Oh, five foot step. If you five foot step, you don't have a swift action. That's poop. That's my turn. Yeah, you got to <laughs> make sure that you position yourself. You only move twenty five feet to start with. Okay, uh, then we're on to Barda if he returned. No, I haven't. I didn't go because I was going. I was waiting for my turn before I left. Where do you have to let the dog out? Like in the neighbor's house? Oh, I just decided I wasn't gonna walk away to go do it real quick. I usually oh. don't. I usually stand there with him. Oh, okay. You watch your dog poo. You don't? don't watch your dog poop? No, I don't watch my they, dog poop. They look to you for security while they're doing it. They, yeah, they worry. It, they, they need the security. Isn't that the trade-off with the dog? You watch it poo, and then it watches you poo? Yeah, I, I think it's there's a contract out there somewhere for it. That is very interesting. I have always noticed that my dog looks at me with absolute shame when I look at her while she's pooping. Josie looked like she was going to cry every time she pooped. And I was like, okay, well, I won't look at you. Sorry. In shame. Most dogs like to look at you in, for security because it's their most vulnerable state is while they're pooping. Maybe that's why she looked so scared. It's because I was always looking away. Aren't you going to protect me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pooping right here. I did not know that about dogs. I just thought they were self uh, or insecure about uh, pooping. My dogs always go and hide in the grass when they poop. I just assumed it was. Well, shame. now you know why. 
I, I just assumed it was shame. I didn't assume it was some kind of security thing. You going to do something, Bernie? Or are you just going to watch your dog poop? I bet you he went to watch his dog poop. Uh, then these skeletons will move up. And they miss Yogi terribly. Oh, shit. I didn't even notice. I thought the wall went up higher, but the gas would move up, too. Those are all at plus two for flanking, but uh, doesn't mean anything. And then... Uh, I guess the rest of these skeletons can move up. Then the mummy lord will move up and cast uh resist fire on the other mummy and then everyone else will shuffle in Everybody in the hallway can make their despair save. There you go, John. You're paralyzed with fear while surrounded. Oh my god, it doesn't get any better than that. You're going to reroll that? Yes. I feel like you should be able to make that anyway, even if... Did you have a code for that, or you just want me to strike one? Just take one. What is he using here? He's using one of his fate points. Oh, shit, really? He's been the treasure guy for a long time, so he has a mountain. Oh. <laughs> probably about 40 uh fate points on my list and uh joe has it, at least half of them oh i got two of them you go girl i do where'd you get the second one from um finding that dragon on, on the map oh okay Okay, what the hell were we doing? Everything was moving up. Uh, you're immune to poison, right? So the mum or the gas doesn't bother you. Uh, so Kronos, you can roll your save. Already done. Oh, okay. Just gonna turn that off. All right, I'm back. Screwing up my view. I assumed you weren't doing anything other than moving up, Berta? Yeah, yeah, that's it.
Ain't that a beautiful fireball? That would be a nice fireball. Too bad Bart is I'm going to throw a fireball. fireball. No, you said you were already done. You're right. Well, but it'd be I a good fireball, fireball now. Next. It's true. Yeah, Had he done it last turn, it would have been terrible. I'll just make sure my next initiative roll is really good, which actually I need to add on. The, are we still getting an initiative buff here? Yeah, plus 11. I mean, we're not at initiative yet, but sure. Well, I... I'm at the. I, I'm just doing my own initiative for the next round because I was at the bottom of our, us. Yeah, it, it is After actually an initiative. Oh, I wasn't even in the wrong. Oh, it is. I think Corey still has a delayed action if he wants to take it. He wants to run up and stand in the fireball. Look at that. Is that a flank with how the planes work on this thing? No, because neither of them have reach. Okay. If, uh, if Yogi had reach and Corey had reach and that rock wasn't in the way, it would. Okay, Yam, you're up first. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll delay. Okay, Barty, you're up. I want to throw a major fireball. Is that what it was? Fireball greater. You're casting. I am not that sure. Fifth level spell. Ye yeah, screw it. Why not? I haven't cast any fifth level spells since we entered the dungeon. May as well use one. That's fair. I like it. Where do you want to center it? I'd... Uh, I got. I got to look up the radius real quick. I have this it's spell. This thing sexy open. Sexy fucking fireball. So it's a 20-foot radius, I'm guessing, because it's based on... It's the same as the other one? Uh, yep. That would hit Yogi, though. He'll be fine. He has versus fire 20. Oh, I, guess I, got, I, got, I got a healing. It's just way too sexy to give up. Which one is this? Fireball Grado? Yeah. It's 30 foot. Oh, it's 30 feet? Yep. Yeah, if you look in the description, any of the, uh, the, the headings there that are listed, like the level or the radius, would be the differences in the spell. Where it says... Acts like fireball, except where noted, the notes are the thing you need to look at. It's a radius, not a square. If I throw it... Oh, right. I thought I'd hit the check mark to make that circle. No, you hit the check mark to make it square. Um, just tell me the point where you're going to put it. No, not move up. Where are you put? I know it? I'm using the radius to help me figure out where where I need to throw it. I I guess because of eyesight, this yeah. is far. The you first I can throw it, and Yogi's gonna have to hit. You have to pick a point, Thanks. put yeah. a mark on the board where you want it to go. You fire a little P to that point, and then it explodes. I'm trying to draw, but it seems like it's instantly getting rid of it. So I'll just ping. Yeah, your drawing's coming up. You need to pick a crosshair, though, not a square. 
So north, south, east, or west of that point? Uh, north of that point. So that looks like it'll get everyone. That's actually a really good position. Forty-seven. And it doesn't get Corey. That's sweet. The only person he gets is uh, Yogi. Good call. Nice damage. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing I did last time and just roll one die for everyone. What's the DC? And they all fail. I know. I want to know if I pass. I don't know if you pass. You have to ask the caster. So it's 10 plus your wisdom modifier plus your sp the spell level. So I want no, to say it's 20. It's 10 plus half your level plus your wisdom modifier. So still 20. Yeah, I mean, you get plus two to that. So, yeah, you boss. Okay, do you have uh, evasion, Yogi? No. So you take oh. 23 points of damage? Takes three, three points of damage. He has 25 take resistance. Three. That worked out. Yes, it did. Okay, um, first thing to take into consideration is that the mummies all have 20 points of uh, DR, or fire resistance. So they only take 27, although then it's doubled. And the mummy lord has fire protection. I forget how much it is. 108. So after he takes the 27, that comes off of his fire protection, bringing him down to 81. The mummies have... Uh... They they take twenty one times two, so forty two damage instead of forty seven. Um, they they take, should take twenty seven damage times yeah, two. They should take fifty four total. Oh, does he have one hit point? Super awesome because he gets one, two, three, four, five, six. 7d6 worth of healing. So 25 points for him. The mummy to the north gets 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 66. And then the uh, Mummy Lord gets the Mother Load. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, D6. I'll just roll half because that's what he actually gets. So the Mummy Lord uh, thanks you in uh, Ancient uh, Archipelagon for healing him. 
I don't know Ancient Archipelago, though, so he's wasting his time. Yeah, he is wasting his time. I say you're a little bitch anyways. Yeah, I don't care if he can hear me or not. He can hear you. He just doesn't understand you. Aren't That's you paralyzed in fear? No, I re-rolled. Oh, okay. Okay. So you're doing anything else, Berta? Uh, no, I think that would take up most of the full standard action. And then I, so I guess I can move forward. I'll move to here. I'll take my turn if he's done. Oh, oh Arda, you didn't put damage on the uh, ghast around the corner. Yep, my bad. I didn't see that guy yeah, when I... I yeah, no, I was. that's why I said you did such a good job of positioning that fireball, is because you got the ghast around the corner, right on the edge of it, but didn't get Corey. That rock formation was absolutely perfect for Fireball. Okay, then we're on to Corey. Uh, I'm going to take my turn. I'm going to sing for that much. Five foot step. Um, and I will... Sh I'll shoot the gas. Okay, what are you shooting him with? Ah, uh, just my boat. Um, so I get... I get minus four. He's in combat, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, minus four plus two. Okay. Oh, look at that, I actually hit him. Um, what is his DR? Is PD? PD is paralyzed and disease. Does he have DR? No, he does not. All right, he's dead. Okay. Uh, Corey and Yogi, you can roll your saves. DC 23. What kind of save? Uh, will save. Oh, he... Right. He blowed up real good. So I take one. Now oh, you get plus two to that. Means, I did the plus two. Okay. It means he takes one as in it's 11 points of damage, and he's got 10 points of resistance. Okay, uh, then it's Corey's turn. What do you take as your fifth level spells, Berta? Uh, uh, Divine Agility, Plane Shift, Revivify, Divine... Oh, I have Divine Agility on there twice. I need to modify that. Uh, Atonement, Stone Shape, Faith Healing, Fireball Greater. That sounds like an awful lot of spells for someone who only gets two or three. Uh, well, looking at the document, I thought it said I was able to know... No is not time. take. Oh, what did I take today? What I took today was Fireball Greater and... You should have two domain spells. The Divine Healing, I think. Yeah. Um, for the non-domain spells. Two fifth level spells for your domains. And then you should have two for being 10th level. And if you've got a 20 Wisdom, you should have one for that. So you should have five. Yeah, I have, I have Righteous Might and Flame Strike for my domain spells. And then Faith Healing and Greater Fireball for my non-domain okay so you should have one more as non-domain yep maybe i should use flame strike on him holy damage would be pretty good against this undead dude although if we run into a bigger badder guy it might be better to save that 
Possibly. Uh, yeah, holy damage does, or um, divine damage does double to undead, so that's nasty. And they're vulnerable to fire. Well, except for that one. Technically true, but he's still vulnerable for it. It's just he has really good protections against fire because of it. Did we lose Corey? Did he go? No, he's doing damage and stuff. I killed the mummy in front of me. Okay, then we're on to Kronos. Damage? Oh, yeah. D6s? DC 24. Oh, he blew that out of the park. So if I stood here, I would give Corey flanking if he stood here. Yeah, if you stand anywhere on the uh, the west side, you give him flanking on the east side. I'm going to regular move to here, and then swift five foot to here, and then standard attack the mummy. I'm using common expertise on this from minus four to plus four. It's just not listed on the weapon. Uh... Oh, nice. Well, that's weird because uh, power attack does list it. Power attack's on there. I just don't have common expertise in the title, but it's. I'm just letting you know I'm using it. All the all the numbers are in there. Chad's plus six plus six. Yeah, that's where um, that's why I'm using common expertise <laughs> to get that that nice plus zero, that nice cool plus zero. Ah, yep. So I cancel it all out. Yep, that's what you're supposed to do. So minus twenty eight, nice. That's all we got. Is that 18 you'll confirm? Yeah. No. And uh, I mentioned there might be some more bad people in the back of the room, as in there's a lot more bad people in the back of the room. Yeah, the DM needs to pan out and move up the other guys now that you're in range. In fact, uh, yeah, you should immediately cast haste <laughs> as soon as possible. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's a lot of bad shit back there. I did not realize how bad this is going to get. Yeah, I, I was just looking at that room to the south of you, and there's only a few things in there, but the back of the cave full of shit, and the room to the south of the back of the cave is full of shit, too. And not just stupid skeletons. Okay, um, so you're done? Yep. 